What's up guys, Titan 1500. We're back for the last video of building a blow through. In this video, we're gonna be talking about tuning your power valve, tuning your air bleeds, and getting you a basic setup for a gasoline carburetor. So stick around. So before the next segment, we start talking about the high speed and low speed air bleeds. I have a little analogy that I want everyone to understand before we start going into it. So I have a glass of awesome soda here and we have a straw. So the straw is our main well in our carburetor and the top, my mouth, is the booster. So I'm gonna be sucking the fuel out just like the booster does to the Venturi. So now when we have our straw and we don't have any holes in it, this simulates a, play, a plugged high speed air bleed or you know low speed air bleed. You're gonna get full suction of the fluid through your carburetor. Perfect, no air bubbles, full flow. Now, of course, we know if we put a hole in the straw, I just clipped one in here, try to get some fuel through this thing. It's aerated, it's emulsified. So there's a few things here. If you put too big of a hole, what happens? You, you don't get any flow through the straw or you start getting slugs. Get a little bit of slug of fuel, then you'll get a bunch of air. Same thing can happen in your carburetor. If you go too big, which is generally a naturally aspirated application, they, they'll fall us. If you look at the boosters, it'll be sputtering. You don't want that. So we want a nice smooth flow. So you can go too big. Luckily in the blow through application, we're, considered go, we're concerned with going smaller. Uh, if we want more flow. So you can overfill or you can plug these boosters. I can't speak today. You can plug the high speed air bleeds but you can also create a siphon effect. So imagine you're uh, siphoning fuel out of a gas tank or a fish or water out of a fish tank and you just walk away. You're gonna overflow the bucket on the ground. Same thing happens. If you shut your car off, you can actually siphon from the bowl all the way through the carburetor. You can siphon from the bowl all the way into the carburetor while it's sitting there. It'll just go, it'll drop down until it clears the bowl and starts sucking air. Um, but it can happen. So you can have a problem with that. Uh, you're not gonna hydro lock your motor, but flood it out, make it starting really hard. So I would suggest against uh, plugging the high speed air bleeds. Uh, you can run a very small hole just to give it a little siphon break in there. Okay, let's get started with the next session. Okay, so the first step is tuning the idle air bleeds. So the idle air bleeds on the ones on the outside. So when would you tune the idle air bleeds? Say I had the primary jet was close. It was like a 68 primary. My idle's perfect. My four corner idle circuit's all adjusted. It just cruises a bit too rich for me. I'm gonna add a little bit more air or increase the diameter of this. Just a little bit and then I'm gonna try it again. Well, every time you make a change here, make sure you reset your four corner idles and make the change to all four corners of your carburetor. So you can adjust your curve of your cruising AFR by increasing or decreasing this bleed. So the next thing we're gonna do, talk about, is the high speed air bleeds, the ones in the middle. This is the big one for blow through guys. So on naturally aspirated carbs, these are quite, quite a big hole. Uh, they don't need as much fuel as boosted carbs. So a boosted carb, you'll see these holes are very small. Uh, they get you know, half the size, so 40 to like 20 thou or something like that. So, or, and the diameter. I'll show you the drill bits later. Um, the smaller you make this, the smaller hole in the straw, you're gonna pull a lot more fuel. So if you get in a situation where you put 99 jets in the back for your secondary, and it's like, man, I need more fuel. I'm on a jet. Well, I guarantee you that there is probably way too big. So tighten that up, you'll pull more fuel, then it gets your jets back in a usable range. That's all we really use it for, is getting that jet in the right range for where you want it. So to tune your air bleeds, I would recommend in the link in the description down below, uh, AED, Holly makes a kit, just a little air bleed kit, they're blanks. You can buy the air bleeds already pre-drilled, but you're gonna have some experimenting here. You're gonna do this. And the nice thing is, you just pull a carb hat off. You don't pull the bowls off or nothing, you don't get wet. Uh, just basically jam the, um, the boosters full of paper towels so these don't go in your motor and you're good to go. So you can tell here, I don't know if you see this, it's a blank. So you're gonna get this uh, pen drill here, like they're like 10 bucks again, I linked them. Uh, they come with little mini drill bits. I'm gonna chuck this into my, my cordless drill. Some people do it by hand, it takes a long time. So let's go drill one quick and just let you guys know how to adjust these quick. 
Okay guys, so I took the cap off the end of this so I can chuck this whole section in my drill. I have a 25,000 drill bit in here. Look how it's microscopic. It's super small. Um, that's why you need to have these because this chuck here, the hole is bigger than the dang drill bit. So it's pretty easy. Okay. Just got a little vise here with some aluminum jaws. Some of you guys see that tiny hole. I'm sure it's not gonna wanna focus, but that's it. So next thing I wanna talk about is adjusting the power valve. So the power valve system has two adjustments. So you have the screw on the front of the power valve. This affects the spring pressure that's within on top of the ball. And that's when the valve opens. It's more of the timing. So I'm on the trans brake and it starts building up boost and all of a sudden it falls on its face and gets really rich. What's happening? I'm putting too much fuel in too early. So I could either back the fuel out or put the screw in farther so it adds fuel later or reduce the amount of fuel. But you still need to have your total fueling. So use the timing between one or two of these to stagger the amount of fuel in over time so you don't bog the motor. Uh, so again, this is the time. The power valve channel restrictors are behind this. As the fuel comes through these channels here, it has to get into the metering block. And we, we adjust the quantity of fuel with the power valve channel restrictors. So let's get into that right now. So in the other video, we drilled out these power valve channel restrictors. So you, some people in some carbs, you can put set screws in here. Um, so you can screw them in and out. I recommend uh, just starting small and working your way up. And generally, if you don't just make a huge jump, you can delay it out a little bit. Um, but you can always drill these out, put a brass set screw in there, and just like the air bleeds, drill that out again. Um, E85 alcohol carbs get some big power valve channel restrictors. In our case with gasoline and we don't have annular boosters, we're not making a you know 2,000 horsepower, ton of power, so it's not a big deal. We don't have to worry about that so much. Um, so the biggest thing I say, you're gonna hear this myth or the bro logic, herder logic, that your carb should be square. And you see guys with power valve carbs, and they'll, what they mean by square is they wanna see, I want 68, if I have a 68 jet in my primary, I want 68 jets in the secondary. So it's square, every corner has the same jet diameter. That works if you have no power valves, and if you're just drag racing, on a blow through car, that's not good and on any car with power valve, that's not good either. So these power valve channel restrictors, they feed the main well. They intersect with this main jet. Just like when we drilled, you could clean it out through this hole. So it's the diameter, or not diameter, the area of your main jet plus the area of your power valve channel restrictor that's gonna give you your total flow, your total area. So we're gonna talk about how to square your carburetor, and I have an Excel spreadsheet that's already pre-done to help you guys figure out what size power valve channel restrictors you need in relation to your secondary. Now, that's for a single power valve setup. You're gonna have a smaller jet in the front, and you're gonna have a bigger jet in the primary, or you have a smaller jet in the primary and a bigger jet in the secondary. But they're gonna flow the same because the, fr the front's gonna have a power valve. The flow should be equal between the two. If your flow is not equal, your carb is not square, you're gonna be putting a lot of fuel in your rear cylinders or in the front cylinders, and you're gonna have bad cylinder, 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 cylinder to cylinder distribution. So it's best to use this as a guide just to kinda of get you in the ballpark and keep your carb within range of square. So another thing is that say, start off with the base calibration, take off, oh man, my carb is, it's, really, it's, it's lean. Okay, I'm gonna up the jets in the back, don't worry about power valve channel restrictor right now. Once you're wide open throttle, 
and you get your air fuel where you want it, then go back in the calculator and say, oh, okay, I could drop my rear jet from 99 to 80 if I bump up my power valve channel restrictor this much. That way the primary and the secondary have the same amount of fuel going into them. So we have to be careful we don't put too much fuel too quickly in the primary on big power applications, you can cause a bog. But under wide open throttle, we want it to be even. If you get to the point where you can't dump enough fuel of the primary with one power valve, or it dumps too much too quick and it bogs, you add a second power valve and you stagger the fuel out. Just like the other video, I'll link them all down below in the power valve tuning. Um, let's go to the Excel spreadsheet. So here we have the Google documents. You'll find in the video description a link to this. Uh, this document is handy because we list all the different drill sizes in decimal and fraction and letter and that will convert it over to the decimal equivalent and then we can calculate the area based upon this diameter here. So we have all the areas listed. Also on the side here, we have the main jets and their areas as well. Also just a quick note that some of these like 52, 53, they don't change diameter. That's just, this is coming directly from Holly's uh, in documentation. So I just left it the way it was and I've been using that. Also, I have a quick example of a squaring a single power valve setup. So you look at the area of the primary jet and the power valve channel restrictor, add those two together. So 0.035 and then same here, here the secondary diameter of a uh, single jet, 0.032. As long as they're close like that, you're good to go. Uh, also, we're gonna have a link uh, to another uh, Google Docs where we're gonna have the um, the baseline settings for the carburetor that we're working on in this video. So now that we reviewed the spreadsheet, let's we'll go over the numbers here with a little bit of some graphics here that I created. So we have our primary and our secondary metering blocks. You can see in the primary, you have the main jet plus the power well channel restrictor that connect and they feed up through the main wells into your booster channel. So in this application, we have a 68 jet in the primary and a 0.08 PCVR. We look up in the Excel spreadsheet, we see the areas, 0 0.0149, 0 0.0206. Add them together, total area of 0 0.0355. On the secondary, since we're using a plug, only using the boost reference in the front, we have only the 86 jet, and that has an area of 0 0.0320. This is a square carb. If we didn't have, if we had like a 99 jet back here to get all of our fueling and not a big enough power valve channel restrictor, these numbers would be way off and you'd be over fueling the rear cylinders. Well guys, that's it for this series here. I hope that this video series has inspired you to try your own carburetor. And as always, the links and the products we use are, the links are in the description down below. Also in today's video, you've seen the uh, Excel spreadsheet and there's some uh, main jet to decimal size conversions. I'm gonna link those as well in the description and on the website with the power valve tuning to make that a little bit easier. And then of course, um, there's always other content that I can bring on to you guys. So if you have any other ideas of videos that you'd like to see, just let me know, put them in the comments below. And at any time here, around here, you're gonna see two other videos I have, one more advanced uh, boost reference power valve tuning I did a while back and the vent tube extensions if you're interested in that. So thank you all for your support. Peace.